I strongly disagree with that. I just think that's a really weak argument and it's choosing to close your eyes to reality. Dying of cervical cancer is definitely not the best choice in that equation. Hey y'all, welcome back. Mom and Dr. Jones, OBGYN and Mom24. Today we're going through some of the most common questions that you had in the comment sections of both the HPV and HPV vaccination videos. If you're not subscribed and you like my videos, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. Now let's answer your most common questions about HPV and HPV vaccination. So this question was super common and asked in a whole variety of different forms. And it's basically, here's my specific scenario. Is the HPV vaccine beneficial to me? This one in particular is if someone is 34 and has never been sexually active, should they get the HPV vaccine? This is exactly why, along with a couple of other scenarios, the FDA actually approved this vaccine up to 45 instead of stopping at 26 about a year and a half ago. So yeah, I think that would definitely fit into a category of someone who would benefit from getting the vaccine later in life. There are a whole bunch of other questions about, you know, how I'm this old, I've had sex, I haven't had sex, I don't ever plan on having sex, all those things. And these are more specific and I think are really good things to ask your particular doctor or advanced practice provider. So if you've watched my first video, my second video, and this video, and you still don't know if you should get the vaccine, talk to your doctor or advanced practice provider to find out. Question number two, in the HPV vaccine video, we talked about how initially when it came out, it was what we call bivalent, meaning it protected against the two most common and two most dangerous types of HPV. And now it has nine types, including those two most common, two most dangerous types, as well as several other common types that are slightly less associated with bad outcomes. So if someone wants to know if I had the vaccine before it was nine, it was two or four when I was vaccinated, should I get the vaccine done again? And in general, we don't think that this makes sense. Although there likely is some increased protection from getting the vaccine because it has the other types in it, it's likely minimal because you're already protected against the two most dangerous types. And that is kind of where the cost effectiveness and life changing effects come in. So although we do think that the nine valent vaccine is better, it's not so significantly better that you should be revaccinated. And that's the current recommendation. But again, talk to your doctor and ask them what their opinion is and get advice from them. This kind of leads into another really common question that I saw. Hello, thanks for doing this. You're very welcome. Is there a booster shot recommended after you get the first series? This vaccine has only been out for about 15 years. So right now we know data on about 10 to 15 years. And for now it looks like that protection in most people sticks around at least that long. So we don't currently recommend any boosters for anyone who has had the vaccine series in their lifetime. That could always change, but right now, based on the data we have, that's what we're recommending. A lot of you were wondering, okay, I got one vaccine or two vaccines in the three vaccine series. Should I start the series over? We generally recommend that if someone has started the series but not completed it, they can just jump in where they left off. So if you got one shot three years ago and you wanted to go ahead and get the last two, then you're totally fine to go ahead and do that. You don't have to restart with injection number one, which is great news, right? Someone wants to know if they've already had an HPV infection but it's cleared, should they still be vaccinated? This is super important. There is some benefit still to getting vaccinated, even if you've already been exposed or even diagnosed with HPV. So yes, the vaccine is definitely still recommended in that situation. However, it's really important to know the vaccine does nothing for treatment or clearance of the virus that you've already been diagnosed with. So it won't help get rid of that. It only prevents you from getting another subtype if you're exposed. I feel like I'm talking with my hands a lot in this video. It's not that exciting, it's just some questions. <laughs> you mentioned that this shot is painful. I was wondering how the pain of the shot measures up compared to normal vaccines. I get nervous about pain and I'm just curious. I would say it's kind of 50-50. Some people say mm, it's about the same as other vaccines and some people say it's a lot worse than other vaccines, but in general, people still find it tolerable. I mean. Getting a vaccine is never fun. Like that's not on my list of things to do on my birthday. It's not a pain that's like so severe that I've had anybody like not come back for their second shot purely because of that. 
Does that make sense? However, pain is a very individual thing and everybody has different pain scales and different pain tolerances. So it's really impossible for me to answer specifically if it will definitely be the same or a lot worse or whatever. But in general, people say it hurts more than the average flu shot, but it's still tolerable and doesn't prevent them from coming back for their next one. Hi, Mom and Dr. Jones. You mentioned in this video that the HPV vaccine is now also recommended for boys. It has been recommended for boys since about two and a half or three years after it was first introduced. Can you talk more about the benefits of this vaccine for boys? Me and my mom both got the HPV vaccine several years ago when I was a teenager, but my brother did not. After watching this video, I'm now wondering whether he should get the vaccine as an adult male. The vaccine is beneficial for people who have a penis because they can also spread HPV. It is helpful in reducing the viral load in the general population. Additionally, HPV is related to other types of cancers that are not just cervical and vulvar cancers. Things like penile cancers, anal cancers, and oropharyngeal cancers. It is both helpful to reducing the viral load in the general population, meaning you don't give it to other people if you have it and don't know, and it probably lowers the risk of some of those other cancers for people who can't get cervical cancer or vulvar cancer. Does that make sense? My parents don't want me to get the vaccine because my dad, who's an anesthesiologist, says that it may be dangerous since it hasn't been out for long enough for us to know the long-term effects. My parents also tell me that people have died from the vaccine. Is any of this true? I addressed most of this in my previous video on the vaccine and there's no reason that anybody who actually knows this literature and knows the safety profile of this vaccine scientifically from a medical standpoint should be saying that it is unsafe or not well enough tested. I strongly disagree with that. All I have to say to that is this is my specialty. I wouldn't recommend it if I felt it wasn't safe. Every major health organization, World Health Organization, CDC, ACOG, ABOG, American Academy of Family Practice, all of these organizations recommend HPV vaccination because it is both safe and effective at preventing cervical cancer. My parents also tell me that people have died from the vaccine. Is this true? I have never seen a credible source, meaning any of the scientific literature that has found a causal relationship between the HPV vaccine and dying. The exception to that would be if someone had a severe allergic reaction or anaphylaxis to one of the ingredients in the vaccine, which could be extremely dangerous. Those are the only things that I can even come up with that would lead to death related to the vaccine. And that's possible with almost anything that you encounter in your day-to-day -day life. Eating peanuts can kill people. I mean, this is how allergies and anaphylaxis works. But yeah, I go over those side effects and that literature in a lot more detail in the HPV vaccination video in the second section called the bad. When my doctor brought up the vaccine, I was 17. My mom shut it down immediately. I didn't even get a say in the matter. She said, you don't need it. Easy solution. Don't have sex. How do you get a parent to even discuss this with their child and how can doctors help advocate for their patient? If a conversation like this comes up in my clinic, I generally will try to talk to the parent just like I did in the last video saying, you surely don't expect that your child will never have sex in their whole life. Of course, that's hard to think about. It's awkward, it's weird, but at the same time, I want my kids to grow up into normal, healthy, happy adults. And that includes a sexual relationship at some point, most likely, of course, if they don't ever have sex, well, that's great. If that's what they desire and they'd rather not ever have sex, then that's fine. But there's no reason that you should plan for them not to, because the truth to that is the vast majority of all humans on this planet will end up being sexually active at some point in their life. I just think that's a really weak argument and it's choosing to close your eyes to reality. How do we address that in clinic is exactly like I said, is just have a conversation because usually when you present it as, do you really think in their whole life they'll never be sexually active? Most parents will be like, well, yeah, of course, someday they probably will. And then the follow-up to that is, well, 80% of all people who are ever sexually active will be exposed to HPV at some point, even if they only have one or two partners in their whole life. So it still makes sense to be protected because dying of cervical cancer is definitely not the best choice in that equation. 
Ashley says, not a question. Thank you for doing this series that is informative and relevant. You provide a complete and honest information on this topic that is stressful and impacts billions of people. That is a really nice comment and you're welcome. And thank you to Karen who helps me gather some of these comments and puts them in here for putting that one in there because it is really nice for me to see things like that occasionally, especially on these videos that mean a lot to me, but tend to get a little lower views. So I am so appreciative of you guys being here, watching this, telling a friend, sharing the information, sharing the video, whatever you're doing, I appreciate it. Your support for me and what I do on this channel, it warms my heart. So thank you, I appreciate you. Get your vaccine. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I will also link my last two videos on HPV itself and the HPV vaccine. So if you haven't seen those, hop on over there and check them out. Be kind to yourself, to each other, to me. In the comments, be kind, and I will see you next time.